all agree that there are gray areas. But what does that mean? You know, if we're going to have a way of distinguishing things and knowing what we're comfortable reading or, or viewing and what we're not, what are some ground rules? Well, I gotta tell you, I have no idea, okay? Because I've been realizing that the entire world of literature is built on plagiarism and essentially fan fiction. So case in point, here we have one of the most popular novels ever written, a classic from the early 19th century by Jane Austen. And we have multiple instances of various adaptations, film adaptations, modernized film adaptations, like the Lizzie Bennet Diaries and Bride and Prejudice, which is set in India. Um, and then we have published works like something called Death Comes to Pemberley, which is fan fiction of Pride and Prejudice, using the characters and the situations created by Jane Austen. Or what about this? A very popular recent book, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Once again, fan fiction. This is an alternate universe fan fiction, okay? And they didn't even bother to disguise the fact that it's fan fiction. It even has Pride and Prejudice in the title. You know, just by looking at it, it's Pride and Prejudice with zombies. Okay? So, fan fiction is an honored tradition in the world of literature. How about this? Here, we have the most popular and influential bestseller ever written, the Bible. And then we have some very highly acclaimed great works of literature that are essentially biblical fan fiction. John Milton, Paradise Lost, fan fiction. But I haven't even come to the most egregious offender when it comes to utilizing cliches and tropes associated with fan fiction. So let's say we've got a pretty popular book, one of the most popular books ever written. Then somebody who really likes this book takes the best known portion of it and sets his story in the best known portion, basically ripping it off and then shamelessly utilizes the writer of the original story as a character in his story. And as a topper, this writer inserted himself as a character in his own story, thereby creating the original Mary Sue. Hmm, what the literal hell, Dante? Yes, that's right. We've got the Aeneid here, written by Virgil. Very popular, lots of good times. Trojan War, Trojan Horse, the whole nine yards. And here in book six, we have a visit to the underworld. And I wrote in my class notes 15 years ago, obviously the source of much of Dante's view of Inferno. That was before I even started reading fan fiction. Well, what do you got here? You've got Dante. And Dante actually has himself as a character and Virgil, writer of the Aeneid, as a character in his book. It's fan fiction, you guys. And it's not just fan fiction, it's an incredibly complicated multi-fandom crossover. What? Mind blown. Fan fiction can be good. So let's not just toss it out, but let's use some discernment in how we consume it. I would say there are no hard and fast rules, but there are some pretty good common sense guidelines that we can use. First of all, 
when you're looking at something that's really well known, like Pride and Prejudice, the Bible, the Aeneid, and if you use some of those characters or situations and refer to them, they're well enough known that people are going to understand that you're not trying to rip them off. You're using them in a respectful sense. Also, there is the, the consideration of copyright. And um, the most recent writer to have lived of our examples is Jane Austen, and, and I think she died by 1820 or so. Um, so her works are really well out of copyright, okay? Um, so, and she didn't have any descendants, so her estate is not being harmed in any way. Um, and so nobody's being materially damaged, whether financially or in reputation or in any other way. So I would say it, it's pretty understandable that you can utilize um, common sense and know that nobody's being harmed and it's understood that sometimes when you use well-known works um, and you write things based on them or riffing on them or something like that, it's acceptable. Um, and there are times when it may not be acceptable. I figure if you're going to be in a fandom you should have the maturity and the common sense and be able to handle all of the issues that come with being a fan. Um, and luckily, I haven't seen any Fifty Shades of Grey type things. You know what? I don't really want to know if there's erotic slash fan fiction of the Divine Comedy on fanfiction.net and I'm not going to look it up. But if you do look it up, can you just tell me in the comments below if it exists? And if it doesn't, we'll all be happier for it. Okay, thanks you guys. And um, thanks for putting up with my long multiple installment session of the first uh, production of Book Club.